I'm just going to walk you through how to download and set up an NGS monument as a control point in QField and how to set up your QGIS project layer so you can uh, get your data collection form properly correct uh, for QField on the Android, the mobile, mobile data collection device, and then bring it back to the desktop so you can export it to CAD. So we'll start out by going to the NGS website. And here they have a great map of Data Explorer where you can go ahead and download uh, all of the shape files and data sheets of NGS monuments that you can use as control. So right here, uh, I'm from Fountain Hills. So I went over here and downloaded this one right here. You can pull up the data sheet here as well to get all the additional information as well as uh, locate information here at the bottom. So I've already went ahead and downloaded that. So let's switch over to QGIS. Uh, we got a new project open right here. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add that layer. So we've already downloaded it right here. So we'll just find where we downloaded that shape file off the NGS website. We'll add that shape file to the project, hit add, and is now here on the project. So right now we don't have any base maps or anything yet. So it's just a single dot on the blank screen, but we'll go ahead and fix that in a second. All right, next we're gonna create our data collection layer that we'll actually use to put our data from our bad LGNSS receiver into the project. This is purely gonna be a reference layer of this uh, NGS monument right here. So to do that, we'll go to layer, we'll create a layer, we'll just do a geo package uh, that works perfectly well with QField as well as QGIS. Uh, we'll just call this data collection survey. Uh, we'll also call that as our table name right here. This is going to be a point geometry type, and we can either collect in NAD 83 2011 or uh, WGS 84, depending on what sort of data corrections you're receiving. So we'll go ahead and add that. So now we have data collection server. There's no data yet in this layer. So we're going to go ahead and configure this so we can get to uh, start adding that. So we'll go over to fields. We're gonna hit edit right here. We're gonna add a couple of fields. So let's just do a couple uh, demo fields right here. We'll do text, uh, add that. You have to specify the length. So we'll just do 256 for that. Uh, we'll add another one. This will just be uh, just a number. We'll add that. And we're also gonna go and add a date field as well. So of course, this is gonna be the type date and time. And we'll also add a field for a photo so we can add some attachments. So, uh, that's gonna be a text right now. I'll show you how to, you can actually add attachments. Uh, let's change the length of that. All right, so if we go down to the attributes form right here, uh, you can see that we have our uh, fields right here. We're auto-generating our uh, form right now. So we're actually gonna go customize that. So right now we have the field ID in our form. Let's get rid of that. We'll add a couple different containers to help sort things for our data collection form. So we'll do one just uh, called overview, add that. And we'll also do one for our photo attachment as well. All right, so let's go ahead and actually apply this. That's the reason our fields aren't showing up. Uh, let's pop that back open. Go to attributes form and you can see all of our fields are appearing now over here. So if we add text, uh, we'll add text under overview, number as well. You can also do the date and let's add photo over here. So now that we have everything added uh, to our form, let's go ahead and configure it. So right here, this is the text you're gonna see while you're actually collecting in Q fields. So uh, alias enter text here. Uh, so this would prompt you to enter the data. You see the widget type is text edit, that is good. Uh, we'll do one for number as well. So for this, uh, you can also enter a number in text edit, but when you pull it open on Q field, it'll only prompt you to enter numbers right there. So the data will still be uh, properly aligned. And again, this could be for any attribute, any uh, aspect of data collection uh, you please. Uh, I'm just showing the, the basics how to set it up. So here for date, uh, we have our date time right here. You see our widget is set up uh, properly for that. And if you go down to default value, you can enter uh, this right here and you can just do dollar sign now and then that will fill in whatever the uh, date is when you collect the data. And then finally, we'll have a, a photo. And so uh, 
change this from text edit. We're gonna have an attachment here. Uh, you wanna save this as relative path. So when you transfer the uh, project to and from uh, QGIS, everything is uh, stored along with it. And uh, right here, uh, you want to uh, change this integrated document viewer from no content to image so you can actually view the image. So that configures all of your fields uh, using all of these widgets uh, for the attachments. So you have uh, that set up now. And so now that you've had your form creation, you're ready to add your base map. And to add some context really helps with locates. So right here, you can see I already have a base map loaded up. If you're doing this for the first time, it's not as intuitive. Uh, as some other GIS programs. All you have to do though, is just uh, add a new connection. Uh, there's a link uh, you can find online. It's uh, just this open street map link that works extremely well uh, for a base map and just paste that in there and that will add your base map. So let's move that to the bottom here. Uh, let's uh, zoom out a little bit. You can see we're zoomed in a lot right there. And now it's showing up uh, with a base map. So. Uh, now we're ready to uh, start packaging and export this over to Android. So first we're going to configure the current project. Uh, you can see uh, we do not have a base map added yet. So let's set that as open street map. And uh, we can only copy features in the area of interest. Uh, or you can go, it depends on what your reference layer is. In this case, it doesn't matter, but that could help save some data. So let's apply that, hit OK. All right, so now we are ready to, uh, well, first we have to save this project. And just as you're saving it, the default's gonna be QGZ, uh, but you're gonna wanna save this as a QGS file. A Q field is not compatible with QGZ files. So save it as a QGS, uh, name it, uh, whatever the project name uh, should be, save it. And now you're ready to uh, go ahead and go over to this Q field sync plugin. Uh, to export it. And so if you don't have this installed already, it's as simple as going to plugins, manage install plugins, uh, search for all, and just type in Q field sync. It's the first one that pops up, go and install that. And that'll give you all the tools necessary to transfer to and from uh, QGIS to your mobile device. So if you package it for your uh, Q field right here, you just choose your export directory. Uh, this one right here, I have a folder set up for it already. So I set it as export form. Uh, we'll select that folder, and then you can go in and create the project. So I'm not gonna do that right now. I've already created it and exported it, uh, but that is uh, how you move it out. But if you actually wanna get it onto your Android device, uh, you can go over to your Windows. You can see where I have my cell phone uh, plugged in right here. Uh, let's uh, open up uh, this in a new window, and you can go ahead Go to your export form. Uh, you can just copy the directory right here. Let's go back and just find uh, your QGIS folder uh, or QField folder on here. And you can see I've already pasted it before and you can paste it in here. And then it's very easy to find it in your QField app. But let's go ahead and view a project after the fact. So I went around the local disc golf course here and collected some data points. And so I know a lot of you are surveyors and interested in getting your points uh, out of GIS into CAD, and that is possible uh, here in QGIS. But first, let me just uh, show off how you get the points back into uh, QGIS from your Android device. And I just wanted to mention too, the QField is available on iOS in a, a beta format. So if you are interested in that, you can go on their website and sign up for the beta. It's super easy. You can get on uh, on their test program. So let's go over here. And so you just go to synchronize from QField. Uh, you select the project folder. And you just go to the same exact folder that we used before. Uh, looks like my phone disconnected here, but you just go back to that same folder within your phone. And it uh, looks like it just popped up here. Go over to QField, go to your export form and just uh, bring that back in. So that's in already. So let's uh, let's go back over here. So when you want to bring it into CAD, uh, just make sure it's symbolized and labeled the way you want. Go over here to project. Uh, go to uh, export right here, and you can export your project to the DXF, which is the open source uh, format of DWG equivalent to DWG. 
And so it's uh, really important here that you uh, choose your appropriate CRS. Right now, uh, we're in Phoenix, so we're using Arizona State Plain Central, uh, because these are the coordinates that are going to be used in your CAD program to geo-reference everything. Uh, so right here is symbology mode. Uh, use your uh, feature symbology right here. Uh, save it as uh, as your project name. And uh, as I said, choose the appropriate CRS. I also recommend uh, choosing Force 2D output. Otherwise, some weird artifacts can be export artifacts can be exported. Uh, but other than that, you should be good. So I've already uh, exported it and opened it up in CAD over here. And as if you can see uh, on the bottom of the screen, uh, sorry, I'm having some of the zoom is covering my window a bit, uh, that all the coordinates are in uh, Arizona State Plain. Uh, you can see from the X and the Y over here uh, in the view on the right side of the screen. So all of your CAD data is geo-referenced. Uh, you will have to mess around with the symbology a little bit. It's not a perfect one-to-one. -one. Uh, but it does uh, allow you to get everything out of GIS into CAD 